Hey there, welcome back to the Field Trip Podcast. My name is Brent Terhune, and, he, and he's back for the, I don't know, third or fourth or whatever time. But my guest uh, today, and we're talking about, I don't know, hotel nightmares or something like that. I'll, I'll get the, t- the title down for you by the time this comes out. But I'm talking to Jeff Oske. Jeff, how are you? Hello, I am fantastic. Good to talk to you again. I think you were, you, you might have been on the uh, Christmas Story episode and maybe another one, but now I don't remember which one you and I did. I think it was a uh, uh, hiking fun. No, I have no <laughs> <laughs> that, that's that's neither a topic I think either one of us would pick. Maybe you would be more inclined to hike, but not me. Um, I do a little hiking. Yeah, I, I like to hike too, but I've never had fun doing it. So that's the thing. <laughs> yeah. uh, actually, uh, uh, the wife and I did a hike and... Uh, it was somewhere that I had biked before and she, I was like, yeah, this loops around. And she thought loops, she thought it loops around to the car, but I meant loops around back to the spot we were at, (laughs) which was another two miles from the car. And uh, that was not a fun hike back to the car. Cause she, she was like, I, I don't feel good. My feet hurt. And I was like, I'm the same way too, but at least I knew where we were going. Yeah. We, uh, we went to a uh, park, not, Far, here in uh indiana and we were on like a just a couple mile hike but uh my lady's uh ankle started hurting her and uh and foot and i of course you know was like well it's you know kind of like just a slight pain like mm-hmm. no it, it's nine months later and she uh she has to go to physical therapy oh. <laughs> i'm just yeah. like strutting along like it's no thing i was yeah. like come on suck it up it's like oh no you tore ligaments <laughs> oh my bad you turned feel- into every guy that rants in his truck and just like pull yourself up by your bootstraps this ain't nothing. <laughs> and then you're like oh this is serious damage i'm sorry yeah i actually i have to massage it like every other night now as like part of it there's like uh she goes to physical therapy once a week yeah and i was just like come on <laughs> the kids can do it yeah like, it's a two mile hike you can't pull <laughs> this off and then she's like no my foot is about to fall off that's why yeah. Yeah, no, she actually has something wrong with it. (laughs) No, that's not, sorry to hear that. Tell her I said, uh, feel better, I guess. Walk it off. Uh, Well, our our topic at hand today is, you know, you and I are uh, no stranger to hotels. So I've gathered a bunch of uh, hotel secrets and tips and stuff that we will talk about. Are we allowed to talk about motels? Motel, yeah, that's... uh, I, I will say hotel nightmares, but more so they occur in motels. <laughs> I have some, uh, some mo- I did. Did you know that motel is like a, uh, that's not like a, like that's like a shortened, that's two words put together. No. What was it short for? Like a uh, mobile hotel. Okay. Motel. I'm Googling short for mobile hotel yeah anytime that it's something is mobile is never good <laughs> what does uh yeah uh, m- motorists hotel oh yeah that, that motorists. works so that i mean that makes sense you could park right at anywhere or you could drive your car up to the place that's usually not good yeah, my uh, my parents are traveling out west, and uh, I don't mean to brag, but my dad has a ten year old Corvette that they took, mm-hmm. and uh, they sent me a picture from outside this motel with the Corvette parked there, and my my mom goes, "Oh, don't worry, uh, Dad says no one robs people at these places because they know they don't have any money," and I'm just <laughs> like, "I go, yeah, well, let's just hope they aren't looking for Corvette keys." Like, yeah, like I would park that Corvette about six six spaces down from your room. Like mm-hmm. I would not park that directly in front of my room. I would park it about six spaces down. Yeah, you never see a Bentley outside the Motel Six, <laughs> you know, or a or a Corvette. So, uh, are you when you travel? Are, are you what kind of? Are you looking for a motel or a hotel? What it you know? What are you looking for? 
me and my ex-wife, we were going out to visit my friend in San Francisco, my best friend and his uh, girlfriend at the time, now wife. And uh, he goes, hey, I found you a great deal. It's like $59.99 a night. <laughs> it's like, sweet. And when we got there and we walked into like the lobby, which was like kind of a glassed just booth area. Mm -hmm. And the guy kind of looked at us weird which was like the first like what are you doing here at the yeah. place that i work yes <laughs> and we're like uh we have reservations and he goes really <laughs> and, and i was like yeah and he like goes to another room and he comes back and he goes uh okay and he hands us through a tiny slot two white towels and is like uh, here you go. Here's your towels for the room. And we're like, okay, that seems weird. I've never been mm -hmm. handed towels at the, at the front desk before. And we're getting ready to walk out. He goes, oh, and I'd lock your door because people tend to open the doors around here. Jesus Christ. And I go, okay. So we go into the hotel room and it smells like fresh butt sex. Um, it <laughs> And it I've definitely never smelled smells... that smell, but I don't think there's any mistaking what that is. Yeah, I mean, well, sex in the butt. That's what it like. <laughs> And I should I should probably get stuff cleared before I talk about no, stuff. You, you, this is a butt safe sex uh, podcast. So um, we're like, oh, let's roll a joint to cover the smell of the mm. butt sex. So we're rolling a joint up and I go into the bathroom and when I walk into the bathroom floor, like I splash, like oh. there's like standing water on the floor. And um, I come back out. I was like, yeah, this, this is weird, man. Like there's water in the shower still. Like somebody just got done having sex here and left. Oh. And uh, so we smoked a joint and we're like, uh, yeah we are we aren't gonna stay here and so we went to, we went to like the embassy suites downtown which was like 490 dollars a night and just mm -hmm. put it on the credit card because we're like fuck this we are yeah. staying someplace we know is nice and uh uh when we went back down to the to the guy to the uh front desk yeah with the towels and he goes Oh, I am not surprised to see you two. Uh, would you like to cancel your room? And we're like, yes, please. And he goes, no problem. And we handed back our towels through the window and we left. That, that's Yeah, it's never good when the guy's like, I knew you'd be back. Like <laughs> the guy that works at that place. And you know, he just handed those towels to somebody else. You guys could have done anything to those towels. Yes, exactly. Like had butt sex with them. You know? Oh, totally. Oh my gosh, it uh, was disgusting. Uh, I was in a hotel and I was on the road with another comedian, Dave Landau, who's been on the show. And uh, he was just sitting in his room and it was like ground floor. And he looks out the window and somebody is looking in the window at him in the room. And he's like, I'm not staying here. And <laughs> he went to a nicer hotel and he's like, you're welcome to go with, because I was in the same hotel. And I was like, you know what? I'm trying to make some money on the road. I'm just going to stay here at this place. That's that's how all my bad hotel decisions, end up. they're like, I'm trying to save some money or make some money on this trip. And then you're in hindsight, you're like, I should have just stayed. It was 40 extra dollars. I should have stayed somewhere else. What's 40 extra dollars, you know? Right. Uh, especially if it means you survive. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing is like, my philosophy is anytime it's a motel six, you at least think it's not haunted. It's always the old. I don't. I don't really su subscribe to that anyway. But I mean, you know, you know, it's always the old hotels that are haunted. But Motel Six is never haunted. It's just the people that are there are way scarier than a ghost being in your room. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So my my worst hotel experience was pre-pandemic. The last uh, thing, uh, last show I did before everything shut down. I was in Utah and again, trying to save money, 
I go to the, you know, whatever the budget, if it's got budget or value in it, it's not oh. a good, don't Someone's stay there. Someone's cooking crack. <laughs> yep. It's value crack. And, uh, I walk in the room and I had paid extra to check in early, <laughs> like, ah. and I walk in and just the smoke detectors on the table. Wow. So it just doesn't work or somebody took it out and like, just you just feel like you'd find a, a a hair that wasn't yours in the bed and i know and i just i just slept on top of the bed the whole time i've i've had a uh a few sleep on top the covers hotels in my yeah. life <laughs> and the thing is like i don't think i could have gotten my I, I should have just tried to get my money back to go to a nice place but i was already like plane ticket in rental car that where it's like you know you gotta try and make some money but it was just the work like you feel uncomfortable the whole time you're at your quote your home you're supposed to be comfortable in a place like that they never like that's one of those things when you start out in stand-up comedy you never really think about like oh yeah any place is cool just put you know a free hotel seems like uh, uh, well look at me yeah. Uh, Mr. Big Shot here gets a free hotel. I yeah. would be an asshole to complain that I'm <laughs> staying at the Triangle Inn off of fucking Route 12. Yeah. And it's, I forget, uh, me and my girlfriend, we, it was somewhere in northern Indiana, and I had a gig, and we go, and it's like a motel, but it's a motel where probably half of the rooms people live in oh it's like never they, good when they live like there, dude like they've set up a front yard in the parking lot in front of their window and their door like mm -hmm. with like a fake little fence that they, they bought at dollar general and they have like bird feeders and shit and, <laughs> and flags out oh god so so we we like go into the room and the rooms are sh surprise shithole <laughs> and it's got like shag carpet from the 70s and like you know all, all the all the it has a, it, they haven't they built it in 71 and they haven't done shit since mm -hmm. and um so we leave all of our stuff just in the middle of the room like in like, like two suitcases and like a bag of like alcohol or whatever and like a and go to i'm like i'm not sleeping in the bed we're gonna go buy a sleeping bag mm -hmm. two sleeping bags we'll zip them together lay them on top the bed but i'm not fucking laying in this goddamn bed mm -hmm. and like it had the indentions in the bed you know mm -hmm. even with the covers made and uh so i go and do the show and during the show, I'm like, hey, I'm staying at the Lincoln Inn down, down the street. And the entire crowd just goes. <gasps> and I'm like, well, this that's not fucking good. And so <laughs> afterwards, I'm trying to sell shirts and CDs. And this old lady comes up and she goes, you are really staying at that inn, are you? And I go, yeah. And she goes, that's where people in this town go to murder themselves. That's uh, that's what we call the suicide inn. And like and some of the men, that's where they bring their whores. <laughs> I was just like, oh my God. So we after the show, we go to Walmart, we buy two sleeping bags, we go back into the room, lights on when we open like we hadn't turned out the lights. Like we open the door and it's like, I don't know, eleven thirty at night. And right on our bags it's just sitting a fucking mouse just standing right uh, on top of it just like not afraid of us in the least <laughs> like mm -hmm. just didn't give a shit we were back didn't yeah. try to scurry and like i like kicked the suitcases over and then it like scurried off into the corner oh god and that's what the light's on yeah. Like if you had turned them off, who no, knows? We what slept been with out. the fucking lights on. <laughs> like, I wouldn't turn those motherfuckers off. I'm convinced that uh, campers are the biggest uh, buyers of sleeping bags. And second, right behind that, is road uh, stand up road comedians <laughs> who don't want to sleep in a bed. <laughs> Ugh. Have you been to one with bed bugs? 
not that I know of, and I'm uh, I I'm pretty good about come home immediately. My stuff is in the washer, and I don't even know that matters with bed bugs, but uh, I've never seen them before. But now, like I kind of in my head, post pandemic and staying at that hotel, mm-hmm. I'm like, I'll stay at the nicer. Like I want to uh a hampton inn that's a good in my head a good hotel or like a uh a, what is the holiday inn express like those and i'm like yeah. you know what i'll just pay the a little more i'm fine and that's not every gig a lot of them like you said come with hotel like last week literally i was in a hilton and that that's like that never happens you know that feels good yeah and then this week I'm, I'm sure i'll be in a budget thing where it's like it's like the the two differences but uh, yeah, I've never seen uh, bed bugs. I don't think I've seen roaches. Um, I but I've just seen uh, stuff that's not clean, and it just you feel gross. Like you're like I'm gonna wear this hoodie the whole time I'm in here as a barrier. Um, but I I've got a, a gathered a whole bunch of stories. Uh, so here's a couple, and this one is unrelatable to you and me because it says. A friend of mine works for a luxurious hotel in London. He told me the concierge, that's how you know. I've not, I don't know that I've ever been a hotel where they have a concierge, a guy that just gets you things. Uh, but the, uh, the concierge system is absolutely absurd. Money buys everything. Anything the client wants, the client gets. They are told never to say no. Worst case scenario, they say, I don't think that's really appropriate. Obviously, drugs really? and escorts are a classic. He showed me 20 phone numbers of drug dealers at his phone to be able to get whatever drugs customers want. And he doesn't buy the drugs, but he he's like, here's the number. You guys take care of it. Um, and it, things of like, you want a new Prada purse at 2 a.m. to go to a party? I can get that for you, but you're going to pay five times the amount of right. a, that it's worth. Uh, you want tickets to Wimbledon for the the that takes place tomorrow? It's twenty thousand dollars. But in some cases, they can't uh, satisfy the customer. So when a couple uh, clients came back drunk, asking him to have sex with the wife while the husband watched, he said, "I don't think that's appropriate." So he's which, they're asking to cuck, which means she was ugly. Oh, is that? Is, yeah, please, somebody. <laughs> Beg my wife, please. <laughs> no, I'm saying if he turned it down. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't think that's appropriate, sir. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, if that was a that was a supermodel, and be like, yeah, hey, uh, how about I just put a blinder up on this side while I yeah, <laughs> yeah, their business. <laughs> uh, and I think th- that's how was it, uh, Falwell Junior. Uh, the guy that the, he they were uh having like not three ways but he was watching his wife getting uh banged and that's how they their big downfall was that the the pool boy was like yeah i had an affair with her and he watched the whole time yeah that's why after that i always murder the dude (laughs) (laughs) so yeah yeah you you take care of it but and that's why it's at a motel a lot of murder that's why the guys bring their whores that's where they bring their hooers. Yeah, now, hooers. have you have you ever used a concierge at a hotel? No, I've never. I I usually stick to myself, and if they don't have it in the vending machine, I don't get it. <laughs> you know? I used one once in Vegas to mm-hmm. to try to get tickets to a uh, to a show. Like I went up and I was like, "Hey, I'm trying to get tickets to go see this show with me and my lady." Mm-hmm. And he's like, "Oh yeah, no problem." And he got us like free two fifteen in the. Which come to find out, uh, you can just show up at the show and they let you in at two fifteen in the afternoon. Like there's no <laughs> special thing about getting fucking tickets to a show at two fifteen in Vegas yeah. in the afternoon. But you still tip the guy. You're like, "Thanks for taking care of us." Uh, well, not only did I tip him, so um, it was me and my wife and uh, some friends, and I think there were eight of us. And when we got to the show, I go uh, to the door guy, I go, hey, give us a good seat. And I like slip him a 10 mm-hmm. and he walks us straight to the front row. 
like a table in the front row and sits us all down i was like man fucking ten dollars that's I guess it was pretty good seats for the longest running topless review in <laughs> Vegas um, at 2.15 in the afternoon. <laughs> and uh, so we watched the show and it was horrible. And the, uh, everyone in the show had opened it back in 52 or whatever. Oh, like okay, all, yeah, yeah. It was a bunch of vaudeville shit and old ladies with old titties out. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, <laughs> So we get our bill and I'm going to pay and I had like a hundred in one pocket and a 10 in the other. And so I go to pull out the hundred to pay and it's a 10. Uh, I had <laughs> tipped this fucking asshole a hundred dollars to attend the worst comedy show I had seen <laughs> to this day in my life. And uh, tried to be, you know, showy and I, I ended up being an asshole. Yeah, then you're like, hey man, can you swap me? Cause I can't pay this bill if yeah. uh No, yeah, I had to I had to end up doing the uh I need to put mine on my card. Yeah. Uh, like. That well he you took care of that guy and it's nice to see that a hundred dollars will get you up front. Can you imagine yeah. if that was like a, a super popular show, what a hundred dollars would get you get you get in the back row. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um yeah, I've never been a, a guy that's like I never like had the balls to be like, yeah, my friend Mr. Jackson right here, you know, he he gets things done like tipping to get things. Uh, I'm I like, hey, can I get uh, you know a better hotel? They're like, no. I'm like, oh, okay. I just I just tried. It didn't work. I know you're like me at the radio station where like once a year I'll message, hey, I was wondering if maybe there was an extra ticket or two to this show that's coming up but like then there's other people that like every show that comes down hey can i get two tickets tonight can i get two tickets Mm -hmm. it's like jesus like easy yeah working in in radio you kind of at least i'm you know i'm never gonna ask for paul mccartney i know that and i'm a i'm a guy who's nobody at the at the station you know so uh, but yeah, I've, I've been like, yeah, let me get that Pink Floyd cover band. Let me get those. Yeah, yeah. Let me get those uh, Monday Night Raw tickets or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then then I'm like, oh, wow, these are way better than I would have bought myself. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, dude, I took my son to a couple of those. And, you know, you're into wrestling. I, mm-hmm. I don't I don't give a shit one way or another. And I'm like, I feel guilty. <laughs> I'm like, Someone who likes wrestling should have these seats. We should trade with someone way further <laughs> up. Like my dad never, like when we would go to like one Pacer game a year and our heads would be against the wall. We would be so yeah. high up. Like you can just lean against the wall. That's how high up you were. Like you watched the whole game on the Jumbotron. Yeah. Yeah. The only uh, sporting events I ever went to as a kid with my dad were just free tickets. It was never like a purchase to go buy oh, yeah. these things. No, that was, that was, my dad had gotten tickets through work and they were, you know, or it was, you know, Boy Scout night. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> it was, yeah, my, and we would sneak, we would stop on the way at Hooks and my dad would like grab like four peanut cluster bars because, you know, yeah. that's what an eight year old loves. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's Snickers. Perfect. I, that's just what an eight-year-old loves at the ball game. And yeah. keep it down. Don't let them see you eating. Yeah, and you're seven, by the way. You're seven if anybody asks. Yeah, I'm thirsty. We'll go out and get a drink from the water fountain. Yeah, these are $13 drinks. You know, uh, some more accounts from people that work at hotels. They say hockey players are the nicest athletes by a wide margin. I don't know if that's, I assume all hockey players are from Canada and Canadians are nice. I don't know. How many times have you been stuck at a hotel where a little league or a cheerleading convention or a hockey convention for kids or a dance convention or how many times has that happened to you? A bunch. And it's, it's my, I don't even know what they're in town for, but I know it's to run up and down the hallway all day and night yeah like i've never seen parents not give less of a shit (laughs) than (laughs) hotel parents that are hanging out in the lobby or at the bar while their kids just fucking do laps 
up and down the fucking hallways yeah. like other people aren't staying there all right kids today's game is to see how wet you can get the elevator go <laughs> You, you win. Everybody else loses, but you win. Oh my god! Uh, nothing, yeah, or, nothing I, worse. No, and it's I. I would get if like the if you would see parents just be like, "All right, guys, keep it down." Then it'd be like, "Oh yeah, it's just kids being kids." But no, they're just like, "Have at it." We got a cooler of beer in this one room. This is where <laughs> the adults are hanging out. <laughs> so crazy. Have you ever had uh, been uh, adjacent to a room with somebody having loud sex? Uh, like only a few times have I been mm-hmm. lucky enough to to be next to a sex room. Yeah, I I, lo- I, I love it. I think it it's fantastic. Me. No, it doesn't bother me at all, and I, I know it's going to last uh, a lot shorter. It's going to be shorter than the kids running down the hallway. <laughs> Way shorter. Yeah. <laughs> so like you guys, go ahead, have a good time, because it sounds like you are. Yeah, I don't mind that shit at all. I, I'll turn down the TV and make sure I get uh, get all of it. I want to hear everything. Yeah. Yeah. I have no problem with it. I love it. And it, it sounds like one of these parties is way into it more than the other. So <laughs> yeah. somebody should change, do something different. But yeah, I, I it was only a few times. And then I, then sometimes I'll be like, was that a moan? I, let me mute it and get my ear against the wall to see if these people are having sex. Like it matters to, it doesn't matter at all. But I'm like, nope, it was just their team. They're watching Pawn Stars the same as me. <laughs> I say back the worst was back when I used to smoke cigarettes, mm-hmm. I would have to go outside all the time. And yeah. especially when I'm out of town doing gigs, I got nothing better to do than chain smoke cigarettes outside of the hotel, mm-hmm. which nothing looks creepier than <laughs> being the dude who chain smokes cigarettes outside of the hotel. Um, but I was doing, I think it was Wiley's and the hotel I was staying at. I came down to smoke and the elevator doors open and it was like a, I don't know, it was by the convention center and they were having like a cheerleading convention that weekend. Mm -hmm. But like to the point where like it was impossible to walk through the lobby type thing Yeah, where you're like hands, like I'm walking like like Not hands me. straight yeah. up in the air, like, <laughs> excuse me, pardon me, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me. Yeah. And all these parents are just staring at you like, why is this creepy dude? Because well, because I'm addicted to nicotine, you dicks. Like, just, yeah. I finally just would go walk around for like two hours because I hated having to walk through all the cheerleaders every mm-hmm. time and get a bunch of shitty looks from parents. Yeah. I'm like, I'll just go sit on a park bench and look homeless for two hours. <laughs> and I would rather the looks from those people than cheerleading parents as I yeah. try to work my way through their kids. Why well, is this guy around my daughter? Well, you you all stayed at the same place I'm staying. That's yeah. why. I didn't book it ahead of time. I wasn't like, oh, is there a cheerleading convention there? Sweet. I'll take a room for the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's, that's a guy who calls up. Uh, what kind of conventions you got at the hotel this week? Cheerleading, <laughs> excellent. Book it. I'm a creep. Oh man, I hated it. Like I, yeah. I wanted, I wanted to switch hotels more for that than any other hotel because yeah. I was just like, I'm gonna have to walk through this lobby 50 times today to go smoke. <laughs> Anytime a group of people all know each other, it just looks. You're the guy. Like, oh, we don't know him. He yeah. must be a weirdo. Yeah. Oh, I stayed somewhere where there was a furry convention, and that was fun. Yeah, furries. They're all, you know, let's they were all, all nice. Have, be mascots of uh, of professional teams and bang each other. Sure, man. Do whatever you want. Dude, I love being anywhere where I'm not the weirdest person. <laughs> like where I go, where everybody's like, "Look at that motherfucker," and I'm like, "Sweet, we're all looking at that motherfucker and not me." Yeah. He's wearing a tail yeah. and nothing else. <laughs> uh, they say royalty is a, is great, uh, but most likely awful. A list of uh, a list celebrities want to be left alone or treated just like another person. So I'm I'm pretty much a, a, an a list celebrity. Uh, politicians are bigger assholes when they're with their families. 
Best thing I saw was the hotel dog. Think an alpine dog that people can pet. Uh, kids will be woken up by the dog if you set up an appointment. So this has got to be a super fancy hotel if it's just not the owner's dog. This is the hotel <coughs> dog. Uh, well, uh, the dog escaped his pen, made uh, straight for the high-end restaurant, and went hog wild. Jumped on a few tables and scarfed down $100 steaks like they were M&M's. Me and another guy saw it. We both saw he was going to escape and we could have stopped him, but we just let him go to see how it was going to end. Greatest day of work by far. <laughs> Let's just let Beethoven run the hotel for a minute. There's some hotel that there's like ducks on the roof and like they'll take them in and ride them up the elevator down up to the roof every day and then back down to their, to their house. That's crazy. My uh, my girlfriend wants me to go there with her. She's the like, Duck Let's Hotel. Go to the Duck Hotel. I'm like, oh, okay. Sure, man. Let's. Yeah. Uh, let's What's not... the nicest hotel you've ever stayed at? I mean the the like the Hilton Gardens, uh, or there's a, a, the all the nicest ones cost the most to park at, and it makes me so mad. <laughs> <laughs> like oh finally i'm in a nice place it's 35 dollars to park here great this is some bullshit <laughs> yeah yeah uh the the hotel in cleveland um anywhere where you have to have the key to get on the elevator that's a super nice hotel oh yeah yeah um but then when you get in there it's like i mean uh, at a certain point of room to me is if it's clean and the wi-fi is good that's all i need so at a certain point a room doesn't get much nicer unless I'm going to go to the spa or what, which I'm not going to do. Yeah. You know, uh, I'd rather stay in like a, a cabin or whatever, like an Airbnb and just do that. Oh, now that I, with our family, that's all we do is Airbnbs. Mm -hmm. Like I wouldn't do a hotel now. No. Like that seems common folk. No, I'm just like, Yeah. Well, in anywhere where you like the nicest ones or anywhere where there's room service outside of the the room, then I'm like, oh, I could I could spend thirty dollars for Cheerios if I wanted to. <laughs> That's how fancy this is. Places that cost the much the most and don't have a free breakfast, which I'm also I'm good not standing in line with other people uh, to watch you make a waffle for a half hour to get your fingers all over everything. What's your best hotel uh, breakfast place? Like, uh, I don't know. I'd, I usually, I'm not even up for breakfast. So either, either if I'm going to breakfast, it's cause I'm, I'm still up <laughs> and then I'm about to you. go to sleep. Uh, I'll set my alarm. I go down, I grab a couple of yogurts. I grab a bagel. I grab some cream cheese still in the pack. I grab like my orange juice and uh, I bring it all back up and I put it in the, the fridge up yeah. in my room. And then I eat it when I wake up. That's a, I, I like a fridge and a microwave, you, you know, before she was my wife, she was my girlfriend. And uh, I remember one time we made uh, hotel chili dogs and uh, that really treated her because you, you go to the store and then you just kind of make shift uh, using the napkins as plates and stuff. So that's, I, you know, she decided to put a ring on it after that day. We, uh, me and my girlfriend, one of the first times she went on the road with me, this guy, <laughs> you put us up in a hotel that had like a it was actually a super nice hotel but it also had well it wasn't super nice it was like holiday in level mm -hmm. but it had a fucking hot tub in the room oh yeah one of like, you get with, the you got the upgrade with mirrors and shit and uh she's like this is pretty dope and then I got just randomly stuck in like a string of nice hotels mm -hmm. just just by luck and like you know she was like fucking loving it and then like <laughs> then i got stuck in like some normal places where i'd normally stay where like you're like yeah we're gonna double double lock the room tonight like kind of places <laughs> and she goes oh my god this is fucking horrible like i'm like, like oh no uh, you just you just happen to show up at the right time like this is the normal like what you experienced for the last like six months is not normal like no this shitty hotel this is what my life is <laughs> like, yeah and i can't imagine being a like a super germaphobe guy who you know just being on the road in general around a bunch of people but then you got to stay in a hotel like a 
I'm already, I like a clean place, but if I was like, that was my phobia that I obsessed over. I can't imagine being that type of person on the road. Oh yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. No. Uh, this one says six of us were uh, at this hotel for a week. This particular hotel, which was definitely nicer than the ones I used to stay in, had a bit of a prostitute quote problem. So we got back from training one day and we're like, damn, that's a lot of cars just circling around the hotel. Turns out uh, this absolutely knockout, uh, gorgeous blonde rented a room for the night, third floor, back of the hotel. And uh, she was working and business was good. So we did the natural thing, grabbed the remaining beers from my rooms, pulled out the deck chairs of the ho- uh, around the <laughs> hotel uh, that it stored. And uh, we... We are in back corner of the lot, slightly hidden from the customers as not to ruin the night. Anytime a customer started up the stairs, we would size them up and place bets. We would bet $10 per customer how long the guy would be in that room with her from door to close to door open. Uh, and it was price is right rules. Uh, so if you go <laughs> over, you lose. Closest one claims the pot. We did this for about five hours. Oh. 11 at night an absolute blast she was extremely busy and if you're wondering the shortest was about four minutes and the longest was 13 minutes huh. just uh but they you watching this guy so if that's five hours and she's probably getting what three or four people in in an hour how'd you like to be the guy that showed up at 11 Ugh. <sighs> I stayed at a hotel uh, near Gary, Indiana that had a sign in the hallway that said a police dog is brought through here once every hour. <laughs> like, yeah, that's like they just would run a police dog up and down the hallway every couple hours at the hotel just in case you were cooking meth or crack. Uh, that's always good when, you know, the cops, you know, uh, uh, just well, even worse than the cops. This one says never, ever. And I repeat use a chocolate fountain from a hotel or banquet hall. Uh, it's a, an expensive brunch. Well, Timmy just double fisted strawberries directly into the chocolate, bit into both strawberries, then triple dipped them in the chocolate again. And some old rich lady just sneezed on it and somebody else just dropped their snack into it. The best part is the chocolate gets strained and saved for the next week's brunch because chocolate is way too expensive. So they don't throw it out. They just save it. And when it gets thick, they add uh, canola oil to it. So you're drinking oil or and chocolate that's a week old and they don't do anything else with it. Okay, just stole five minutes of my act about going to Golden Corral. Well, <laughs> that's that. It's even like going to a buffet in general is any more like you just see like a kid eat straight from the spoon that you serve with. Or oh, like, yeah. You know, just... Uh, Ugh. And then just to know that they don't even replace the chocolate. It's just, we're going to keep this chocolate for the next thing. One of those that you just avoid. Ugh. I know you would never do this, but one of my favorite things about hotels or motels is the dude who hangs out by the counter, like annoying the front desk chick. It's a, he thinks he's got game, but it really she's there till three. Yeah, she has no choice but to stand there and listen to him talk. Yeah. That's my favorite, especially that, that, especially when you really hate the headliner and you enjoy watching him get shot. <laughs> that well, that happened, and it wasn't even the headliners; it was open micers uh, at the talking to the front desk girl. And again, she's there till she's off, so she's got to talk to you. Yeah, and it's I just, always love that. Uh, this goes back to your old lady's point that said that a lot of people commit suicide. A lot of lonely people go on va- vacation to end their life happens a lot and is never mentioned on the news uh dead people in some places there's a reasonable chance somebody has died in your bed yeah Ugh. uh it varies in the type of hotel and clientele but some places you get deaths weekly and uh one place i worked at maybe 40 percent of the beds had been died in i uh well i bought my mattress from flanner's funeral mattresses and I only buy mattress. <laughs> I go around and uh, 
uh, uh, buy the mattresses off the family whose uh, whose loved ones died in it at their house, and then I. Now, so there used to be a swingers club in downtown Indianapolis, Brent, back in the day. Mm -hmm. There was. I don't know why there was. And I knew where it was. It was on the corner of Capitol. And uh, it was right across from my work when I worked at the brokerage firm. You could see it out my window. And they, they finally got it. It finally was shut down. But they had a big auction. And they were fucking... I sat there and watched them take mattresses out of there and stack them like nine high on pickup trucks and strap oh them God. down and drive them away. And it's like, oh, that's going to the Motel 67 out on <laughs> Middleton Pike. Like, uh, where it's like, and I, I, when you sleep in a hotel bed, yes, somebody's had sex in it. There's no chance somebody didn't. Oh, yeah. But then also, given that number, somebody probably died in it. And then somebody just had a, an orgy. No. in that bed and you just like or I hope shot that... themselves in that bed or yeah everything has happened in that bed and you just you know you, you just you're like yep this is the price you pay for being on the road yeah comedy <laughs> I, love... <laughs> so, I it's one of those things like you just can't think about it you just kind of have to go and do your thing and not yeah concentrate on Oh, it's always gross. Like the, I'm sure you've noticed the, if there is a table with a chair, like a work desk, Mm -hmm. that chair always has some really weird stains on it right around the crotch area. And you're you're just like, no. Yeah, where you're just like, how much seed has been spilled (laughs) on this chair while some dude's watching porn on his laptop? Yeah. And ass naked. Oh yeah, I'm sitting on it. Ass <laughs> naked. <laughs> that was sold at auction. You want this chair? No, thank you. I, I also get annoyed when a hotel has the same art and all the chains. Like, yes. like yeah, I've seen the uh, I've seen enough of the uh, the bright red phone booth picture. Please get some more art. And that's the dumbest thing to complain about. I dated a girl who lived in rockville indiana and she worked at a hotel as like a maid during high school and college like during the summers Mm -hmm. and i was like what's the grossest like Uh. and she goes there was always dried semen everywhere like and it would be like three quarters of the way up the wall like dripping from the ceiling like on the lamps she's like are guys shooting this far or are they like catching it in their hand and slinging it? And I'm like, I don't know. I know I'm not doing yeah. either of those things. I'm not hitting the ceiling lamp above the bed yeah. and I'm not taking a handful of it and winging it on walls that, that aren't mine Spider or, man. or even Spider my man. own walls. No, no. Oh God. I can't. That's what a job I would not want is the, the hotel maid. And anytime I'm in a room, uh, like I l- at least try to like if I got a lot of trash I'm like all right all the trash is in one central area I try to get all the towels that I use here's all the dirty stuff like you know it, and then you tip and then I just, always like, leave I always tip now I yeah. used to not now I always I'm like oh I feel so bad you gotta wipe wipe down shit I've sat on <laughs> ass, naked. I, yeah. ass naked ass <laughs> naked uh, checking in late at night sometimes means free upgrades, discounted uh, or discounted rates. We would try and sell every uh, last suite at night for almost 80% off. We just wanted something so they don't go unoccupied. Sometimes if we were oversold on rooms, the late arrivals would get a free suite upgraded because we had no other choice. So you run the risk of maybe not getting a room or the hot tub. Up to you. That's pretty good. Uh, when you complain, the nicest, uh, more understanding guests get better compensation, and the rude guests get bare minimum. Bare minimum. That goes without saying. Just be nice, and people will take care of you. Yeah. Uh, we had a guest we ended up calling Pie Guy. He would come in the hotel without a reservation, paying cash plus the hundred dollar cash deposit, and the next day we we would go in his bathroom, and the bathtub would be full of remains of. Nothing but expensive pies. He would come back to the desk for his deposit. He never came back for his deposit because he knew he wouldn't get it back. 
we added his name to our do not rent list and he just kept changing his name <laughs> to be the pie guy. This one lady came into our lobby around 11 p.m., asked for the workout room, so I opened it back up, figuring she wanted to work out. I later went back around 3 a.m. to close up, and she had uh, made a bed on the treadmill because her and her husband fought, and she didn't want to be in the same room. So she's sleeping on the treadmill. Uh, I <laughs> that used to... surprise me. Yeah. It's also gross, but somehow... I might want to sleep on the treadmill more than some of the hotel beds I've stayed in. Yeah. I used to work at the front desk and a guy asked if he could use another room to store 11 life-size sex dolls. 11. Where did, where did, what, what's he driving? <laughs> a bus, apparently. Oh, okay. In the, in the carpool lane. Uh, there was this one guy who stayed at least one night every week and he always requested the same room. We thought he was maybe making drug dealers uh, deals or something, but we searched the room after he checked out that uh, one day. Turns out he was hiding a blow-up doll under the mattress. We threw it away, and he only came back once after that. I felt kind of bad for him. So he's leaving stuff behind to come back. Now, I've heard of comics, like, hiding, hiding like, joints and shit behind, like, paintings and stuff. I've heard of that. I was like, I always hear like, check the shower rod. If you can remove it from the wall, sometimes people hide stuff in there. But also, who's who's leaving drugs? Take your drugs, you know, unless yeah. you got to be on a flight or whatever. I've, I've never found anything good in a hotel room. I've never found anything. I'm Though I'm not looking. I don't want to find anything in a hotel room. No. Uh, wh well, here's another one. Uh, things so I started working in this hotel it was under bad management so proper cleaning didn't really happen one guy came in every week uh, or two used the same room for three or four hours and would leave we didn't do hourly rates so he always paid the full price of the room that's other the hour, hourly rates just don't even you know yeah. nobody's sleeping well that's uh, where I apparently had, had booked in San Francisco <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, no one ever accompanied him. No one asked for his uh, his room while he was there. The next day, maids would find nothing unusual. After a new manager came in, the hotel got its first thorough cleaning in a long time. So uh, we are going through and having uh, moving beds and credenzas. Must have been a nice place if they have a credenza. Uh, <laughs> checking ceiling tiles, etc. We got the same room he's been staying under the bed. We found a massive porn stash. Movies, magazines, lube. Everything is sticky and obviously used. Uh, the maids use double gloves. So not only was he found out, but he lost the man lost his stash, Jeff. Oh dude, I'd be so pissed. Yeah, it's years of what what kind of life is this le dude leading where he can't have it around anywhere? He's gotta leave it he off. He probably site. has three kids at home. <laughs> Three new before the internet kid. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we had a swingers group stay at the hotel for a few nights. They had a rave going on on the second floor. There were naked people everywhere on the floors. Kids were freaked out by it. Other guests were complaining. On top of that, families could hear the couples running uh, through rooms and constantly fucking. All that's funny, except for like, oh, I know there are kids out there. Let me just hang dong uh, from one room to the next. Yeah, that's kind of messed up. I, you, usually, um, from my friends in, uh, who uh, are on weird scenes like that, usually you rent the entire hotel. Yeah. Or you rent the entire floor and mm -hmm. then block off the entrances to the floor so that young children don't wander onto the floor. Yeah. <laughs> like, just it seems like the responsible thing to do, but. Yeah. Some... I don't know, man. Why are you doing that at a hotel? Well, I mean, I wouldn't want a bunch of people fucking at my house. I would yeah. definitely be like, take that on down to the Motel Six. You know, that's a lot of that's a lot of pressure, Jeff, to be the orgy host. <laughs> what is everybody like? Chips, pretzels, <laughs> Diet Coke. What do we want? I want this to go so well. I don't want to not impress any of my friends at the, or at the orgy. Um, t last two. I was working in a luxury hotel and we had a fairly big name band staying with us. Uh, there was no noise complaints and they seemed to be perfect tenants. 
when they left and we went to clean the room, every single piece of furniture was nailed to the ceiling. <laughs> And roughly the same configuration that it was before. So they just nail. I don't know how you nail anything to the ceiling and have, and not be like, is somebody na na like nailing something yeah. in the next room and not a person? Yeah, I or the floor above them is like, yeah, uh, yeah uh, someone keeps on knocking on my floor with a hammer. <laughs> also, that that reminds me. Did you ever see those pictures of Burt Kreischer? would like uh leave like these hotel blanket and towel sculptures in the room i loved them or like you know a pair of shoes sticking out from the bed yeah uh that reminds me that's that where that that doesn't really do any harm because it's a towel or whatever but you're just nailing how do you nail a lamp to the ceiling first off you know yeah i would think that would be more of like a liquid glue type situation like a yeah. caulk gun with like some construction adhesive <laughs> would work better than nails what kind of life are you leading to where you're like all right let's glue some let's bring the glue for the hotel room like although i have always thought it would be awesome before i die just to like have enough money to like trash a hotel room just once like just, just throw like, the tv out the window led zeppelin style yeah That'd be fun once. I'm very respectful of my hotel rooms. I don't <laughs> ever do anything crazy. I mean, you uh, we could do that now. We could get a Motel 6 and just, you know, throw that big tube TV out the window. Uh, and they'd probably be doing a fa everybody a favor by getting rid of those big ass TVs. They'd probably, a comedy club booker would probably come by and pick it up and put it in the condo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last one. There was no more, uh, there's no more to say here, at least none that I know. Working as a cleaner in a hotel, went to clean a guest room, dreading it since uh, they'd been there for a while. And I found a goat dressed like Abraham Lincoln. I don't know how it got in there or how, how it was removed, but I just know it was a goat dressed as Abraham Lincoln. I like it. There was, uh, there was a story, I think, too, you probably saw this a couple of weeks ago where a woman had moved into a hotel during COVID and mm -hmm. had two rabbits. And then, like, they went to her room to tell her to move and she had, like, a hunt, over 100 rabbits. In oh, her my room. God. And, like, I can't imagine, like, walking anywhere in a room and stepping on shit, but then also a rabbit. Uh, uh. I uh, have you ever done the thing where you where you don't trust the the room so you lay towels down on the floor to walk on so you don't uh, like you go down to the pool grab like 10 towels and just litter the floor with yeah. towels I've not done that but I probably should have and I know there's some like I don't remember who it was that's what he does is he's putting down a barrier because I know they're not cleaning that floor either you know yeah just whatever i one time i actually uh dropped in a hot iron onto the carpet and it it burned the iron into the carpet and nobody said anything so i didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> it fell off and burned i was like oh shit i'm gonna get charged and then nobody said anything so would you ever anything. use the coffee maker in the hotel room i don't drink coffee but no because they they say that's another thing is like they don't clean that shit no, I'm good. And then you see like videos on YouTube of people being like, I made shrimp in my hotel room in the coffee maker. Yeah. Like, I washed my pantyhose in the coffee maker. Yeah. You hear the, uh, like a traveling salesman steaming his underwear in the coffee maker. <laughs> like, oh, God. No, I don't even want to sleep on the bed. I'm not putting my lips on anything in that room <laughs> unless you know her. You know what I'm saying? Hey, -o. Come on, folks. Uh, any any final thoughts on uh, hotel uh, nightmares? I uh, I I bet you there's way worse. <laughs> there were a lot of like bodily fluid stories, and I was like, you know what? We don't need to go that far on the you know with so many jizz stories. So um, I know for a fact um, when like somebody dies in a hotel room or offs themselves and dies that there's like a whole process they have to go through in that room. Yeah. And I watched, uh, I watched about a company that handles that. that it's like, those like post life companies that come in because 
yeah once the cops leave at your house the you know the blood is still there whatever at whatever right. happened you know right Ugh, i can't imagine yeah but they they showed how they go in and bag the bed like if the person like blew their head off on their bed how they bag the beds and how they like strip the wallpaper and put up new wallpaper and steam clean the carpets and oh god and and they can do like a horrible horrible scene in like eight hours they can yeah. make it look like no one died there eight hours earlier it's very possible that 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 you got that room that you're just staying at you know oh this is super nice it's very clean i wonder yeah, why the the, <laughs> the paint smells super fresh <laughs> I'm getting high off the fumes. <laughs> Man, they really take care of you here. And then little do you know, a, a day earlier, some guy died in there. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> Just not pleasant thoughts, but uh, I'll be on the road this weekend. Nice. <laughs> uh, do you want to plug anything before we get out of here? Uh, no, absolutely not. I have nothing okay. going on in my life. Well, follow Jeff on Twitter, at least, uh, at Seed yeah. Funnier. And on Instagram at Jeff Oscar. Excellent. Thank you for being on the show, Jeff. Thanks for having me. 